how to make money with short-term rentals. So you asked in a comment section, those of you on here on YouTube, and we are delivering that answer today. So uh, get a pen and paper. There's three things I'm gonna talk about. So number one, I'm gonna talk about just the types of short-term rentals. What's all your categories you can make money in? Number two, how do you get started in Airbnb? And now with all the restrictions, how do you stay and make money consistently there? And number three, how do you use OPM or get funding if you don't have any right now? And do you really need it? Cause you could arbitrage in the middle. So again, get a pen and paper. This is the big one. You've asked for it, let's begin. So what types of short-term rentals are there? I'm gonna talk about four different categories. There's obviously vacation rentals, right? The VRBO or Airbnb. So you can do short-term rentals and it's very lucrative. The challenge, I'm gonna always go pro and con with this. So the pros, you're going to make more money is more consistent money and uh, you're going to cash flow better. The downside is you also have to have the property management and the TI support, which is tenant improvement support. So don't think it's all roses. Um, I always give the downside and just so you have walk in eyes wide open and don't get hit going, oh my gosh, I thought this was just all money in. The more frequent, uh, the more TIs and management you're going to have to have. Number two, private rooms in your primary resident or remodeling. I've seen a lot of like single, you know, people that have a beautiful home, they rent by the room. In high construction areas, that's a huge one. Like in the Boise market, we've been up there the last few years and really doing a lot of projects. So they needed to move in a lot of workers. So folks that had, you know, three extra rooms, they rented it for five, $700 a month just for the room. All right, so you have three rooms at 700 bucks, you just made an extra $2,100 for the month and really created a primary residence into a cash machine. The thing I would highly, highly encourage you to look at, and we have a team that can do it, so click on the link below to get an appointment for a corporate structure. I would put an entity around that. Even if it's your primary residence, now it's time to make it an LLC. An S Corp, C Corp is typically not appropriate for those because now you've got liability in your home called three renters or two renters or consistent flow. So the other thing just in general about structure, the more frequent you have humans, humans are a huge liability. Although they make you money, they're a huge liability. So you wanna wrap the asset into an LLC. So if anything happens at the property, they can't sue you for the actual home. They can't sue you for a whole variety of other things, anything else you own. So you wanna like lock up your assets and liability in the right structure. So that's just a little gift. Click on the link below, we'll get you an appointment to talk about what's the best corporate structure given what you wanna do. So tiny houses, like tiny houses have been on the like total growth. In Australia, you have a client that all they do is tiny homes. They put them on the islands, they go out, you know, on the coastal islands, they're going all over the world, South Africa, tons of tiny homes. And tiny homes are also things that you could put on your property. So if you have a large enough property, like, you know, if you had five acres, you could probably put two or three little area of that property, put two or three little tiny homes out there and rent them. You could do short term or long term, but now you've monetized your property. Lots of things we're gonna be doing in one of our project called the Country Mall, where there's a home office and a lot of land. So we're gonna have like little kiosk kind of, you know, buildings. Think about the little shed kind of buildings you could buy at Home Depot, right? So each will have a little shed. They'll have, some will have electricity brought in water to them, some of them won't. We're gonna supplement with food trucks and other vending products. And we're gonna make them all like a super park and atrium so people can come and just hang out. And the business owners in town that maybe they have jewelry but they can't afford to actually have a full brick and mortar office. But every weekend, almost like a market, like a farmer's market, they could come out, artists could put their stuff there, coffee makers, people who are, you know, want to do a contract kitchen. So we're going to monetize that entire project and property calling a country mall. And then our goals, take that to other cities once we monetize it in the one city. So all sorts of ways you could do short-term rentals and reconstitute a property into making money. I know one of my friends a couple years ago rented a house and they took the garage and made the garage into a rental unit, right? And they rented that out for $800. So lots of creativity going on in the markets and how people are willing and open to live. Glamping, which is living in a trailer. Uh, with the pandemic, it has been fascinating to watch the amount of really high net worth people totally do a sell-off buy a $200,000 RV and go glamping. They go park to park to park. They go, whether it's mobile home parks to camping parks to, you know, they travel around and uh, it's called glamping. So lots of ways to do it. You could also rent out. I know a few people renting out their campers now. I know some people that are renting out their RVs, renting out their boats. So people are willing to live in various situations. I have a client who actually Airbnbs their boat and a lot of people want to check out boat living. So they'll go rent it for a month. Whole thing's odd to me, 
don't know, don't care. This is about you and how you can make money in short-term rentals. Lots of creativity is what I would say. So how do you get started in Airbnb? Well, if you don't have any money or means, you could be the manager in between. So you could find the people who own the properties who want to convert their property into Airbnb and represent them. And then you run the ads to find the people to actually come and rent. So if you just do the management and do the fulfillment to make sure that they are full all the time, you can make 10% ish kind of in there, eight to 10. If you actually do all the turn where you actually are coming in with the cleaning crew and every time doing the turn and cleaning and making sure that, you know, all the, the dishes are working and the electronics are working and everything's working, you can get up to 20% of the rent. So Airbnb arbitrage is something that a lot of young folks are doing just to get into it. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to talk about OPM and how do you use other people's money. But also, you know, there's a little creativity and I've suggested this to a few clients is why don't they for a, instead of taking 20%, take that extra 10%. And if the owner's open to it, earn some equity into the property. So that's a different kind of deal. I'll have to mentor and coach you into that deal because that's the way you can start earning equity into all these projects. So you're an actual owner, not just sitting in the middle arbitraging. So you can sublease an Airbnb if you have to, because in some HOAs and actually some towns, they're banning Airbnb, like the suburb areas don't want of visitors turning in their weekend homes and the, the people who live there full time are complaining. So there are more and more restrictions coming around Airbnb. I know some towns that just won't allow it. Homeowners association areas will not allow it because they don't want the turn. They'd rather have a six month or year renter and have a consistent neighbor than having strangers come and go and come and go. Because in some of those areas, you know, there's been theft, big parties at night, super loud in the neighborhoods. So be very careful where you select. I would get to the building planning commissioners. I would get to the chambers. I would find out what's going on in the town. And is it really a long-term opportunity or short-term opportunity, depending what's going on in the town? We live in Lake Tahoe area. A lot of the California sides have banned it. Like the Nevada sides continue to have it open. So people have just shifted down the road, but that's all got the same complaints because there's just too many on the Nevada side. There's too many long-term owners there that don't want a neighboring house to just have a constant churn of partiers. So it's interesting. So be aware where you are. And before I give you the OPM talk, I want you to subscribe to this channel. I want you to subscribe, click the notification button, and then watch the video. And if there's a video that you want more content about, or you want clarification, go to the comment section, put it in, and I'll be right back out here. And this is one of them where we're delivering back what you wanted to learn about and I'll do this all the time. So share this with your uh, community of people. So uh, like it, share it. I want huge viewership in 2023 as we move into this next year. So if you really want to change your conversation with money and business, you need to be here. It's a very unique channel and a very broad breadth of content that I deliver on a daily basis, 10 to 12 minutes. So last thing, how do you get OPM? for short-term rentals. So first of all, I'm gonna go back to the good old basics. If you have good credit, go down to your local bank. They're actually still some of the best interest rates you can get in this environment. There's extra fees using mortgage lenders. And uh, if you don't have good credit, go find somebody who has OPC, other people's credit. Maybe you have the money and they have the credit. Together, you can do a deal. If you don't know how to do those deals, go to asklaurel.com, put in your comment and your question, and maybe we can mentor or coach you into how to understand how to do these deals. They need to be in an operating agreement, in an LLC, not just some individual like casual little document handshake agreement. Most likely that will blow up for you. OPM is everywhere. There's so much cash on the sidelines right now with the market the way that it is, crypto the way that it is. There's so much cash. You could get hard money loans from other people. You could get funding, 0% financing for 21 months. That's my favorite because it costs you nothing but good fundability. And if you don't know how to get fundable, again, click on our link below and set up a time with one of our lead strategists. We'll talk about how we can help you get OPM funding and uh, really coach and mentor you through that. At any time, go to asklaurel.com, make a comment, ask a question, ask for a request, and we will be right there with you. Let us help you make 2023 the best. I have my theme for 2023 is be free in 2023.